Buenos dias, buenos dias to this lazy Sunday where I'm going to be talking about my Cosmos airdrop strategy specifically for Celestia and Dimension. But first, let's look into some of the price movements here. We're seeing everything slightly down today. We're all a little bit in the reds. Um, nothing major has happened, neither to the upside nor to the downside. Biggest winners today, Mars, Passage, Sommelier and Stars. And the biggest losers here, we've got Regen and Ixo on there. We talked about it in the past couple of days. They had had huge runs and um, that's why they're just consolidating a little bit. Um, but yeah, besides that, nothing much is happening. So let's get right into it. And I want to start off talking about my views on the current situation of Celestia Tia, because we have seen a crazy launch, to be honest. Like this thing launched at like two, three dollars. Then it went all the way to seven dollars, then to ten dollars, then to thirteen dollars. And it went all the way up to almost 20, actually. Uh, slightly above $20, right? Um, less than a month ago. And ever since then, we saw a consolidation retrace and yeah, went even below $13 here last week. And now we're at $14.50, which implies a fully diluted market cap of $15 billion. So that's big. Also note that tier unlocks are not starting before October. So we still have uh, six months time until then. Um, even though it's also important to note that um, the early investor tokens um, most of them, I guess, are staked and they can sell their staking rewards, which can also mean a decent sell pressure. And probably that's also why the TR price has been um, held back in the recent weeks, um, as well as also like the early buyers, the early people that bought in the open market, uh, TR like two, three dollars. And obviously we had this huge narrative around airdrops, which I think honestly is still intact. Now it's just everyone has kind of set up their wallets and everything ready to claim and harvest TIA airdrops. Um, so my strategy for TIA is actually unchanged. I still think TIA is going to be one of the biggest base tokens for airdrops this season. We saw, for example, that we already got the dime airdrop for staking TIA. And the dime airdrop is now also reading us new airdrops. Um, and then the Celestia airdrop we got actually for staking Atom. So Atom gave us Tia, which now gave us time, which is giving us airdrops like NIM or um, yeah, even more. There's like four or five dime airdrops. We're gonna look into this in a second. But yeah, Tia, Dime, and Atom are my top three base coins for Cosmos airdrops at the moment. I would also add Osmo and Bad Kids to that basket, right? Bad Kids are Stargaze NFTs, the flagship collection on Stargaze, and Osmosis, the flagship IBC chain and DEX in Cosmos which we also got decent airdrops over the years for staking Osmo. So I think those five, but specifically those three, Tia, Dime, and uh, Atom, are the main tokens for airdrops. And if you ask me also, like, what should be the minimum, right? How do you actually do that, right? And where do you stake? How do you stake? Well, the way you stake is you go on Kepler, wallets.kepler.app. If you are still holding your coins on centralized exchanges and staking them on centralized exchanges in 2024, then you're not doing it right then I want you to pause the video right now, go over to wallet.kepler.app, set up your Kepler wallet, write down your seed phrase on a physical piece of paper, go to a centralized exchange, withdraw all your tokens to your Kepler address and stake them. And not only stake them, but also take part in governance, right? There's always governance proposals that you can vote on. And I think as the bull run matures, I also think that airdrops will be more and more refined and we saw this also in 2021. At one point, Cosmos airdrops started to become um, gov drops, right? Governance drops. So only people who are staking, but also actively participating in governments are getting airdrops. So that's why I think it's very important to vote. Also take your time, read through the proposals. There's now also um, ChatGPT summaries, I think, for some of them, the, the, the big uh, text proposal at least. But anyways, um, you can stake here. And um, that's, this is how it looks like if you want to then stake your TR, for example, right in that case. So if you had TR on your wallet, you would be able to stake them. And Kepler is even warning you from validators that have very high commissions and actually recommending you to stake with low validators because that might imply that this validator is running a centralized business. So they're actually kind of staking customer funds, right? This could be an exchange. This could be a VC fund in the case of Polychain, for example, um, or Bitcoin Swiss. Not sure about unit 410. I think that might also be a, um, a fund. Um, but yeah, it might also be either just individuals or um, the centralized exchanges, right? I'm not sure if there's a centralized exchange actually here on the TS set, 
But yeah, you get a good feeling about that, right? So number one, avoid high commission validators. Number one, because you're getting less staking rewards. Number two, they might be running a centralized business and new projects that want to give an airdrop to existing stakers and delegators, they mostly actually exclude centralized validator nodes from uh, receiving the airdrop for their delegators, right? Because in most cases, the centralized provider who is running that node is not actually distributing those tokens to their community of delegators, which is why it's pointless, right? Because in the end of the day, um, giving out an airdrop is basically a marketing spend, a user onboarding mechanism. So avoid high commission validators. At the same time, also avoid 0% commission validators and um, avoid those that are yeah, just there to farm the delegations, right? There's now also obviously a lot of stake drop validators. Um, I personally also think you should avoid these because in many cases they just give out or, or hype up an airdrop for their own project, which in the after day you will most likely be disappointed about because they boost delegations so much that they have hundreds of thousands of delegators and that also just dilutes the amount of um, value that, that's being airdropped and people are not actually engaged with the product, but more so just you know to receive an airdrop. Um, and they might also be excluded from other airdrops, right? So that's just uh, an assumption here, obviously. Um, avoid 0%, 100% stake drop validators. Also avoid any um, any validator in the top 20. Um, right now here in Kappa, you don't really see uh, the top 20, but uh, on MinScan, it actually shows you which are the top 20, but yeah, somewhere here, I guess. Um, so yeah, go further down. Obviously, I'm biased with Sexito. We're running our own validator here on TI. You can delegate to us. We're outside of the top 20. We're not running a centralized business. We're not doing a stake drop or anything like that. But there are also a lot of great validators further down the list that um, also deserve delegations and um, where you can also contribute with um, decentralizing the chain, right, in the end of the day. So what I recommend you, find a validator that you vibe with, that you also feel like um, you appreciate what they're doing. Um, they can do contributions on technical levels, but they also can do stuff on, on content and marketing side of things, um, being in close touch with the community also, which is something that we at Stixito are also obviously very good at and doing governance. But yeah, there's different validators for different um, yeah contributions. Um, but I think it makes sense to yeah always pick and choose your val validator and not only you know look for the lowest commissions or the lowest um, or the highest probability for getting an airdrop or chasing those kind of things, right? So that's about that. And I think the minimum requirement for TIA at this point is probably at least 51 TIA, I would say, maybe even 101 to be on the safe, safe side, right? Because I think as the bull market matures, the criteria will get harsher and harsher, right? So look at TR, for example, 101, I would say, for Dimension also around that, um, probably even more. Um, but yeah, Dimension, the same picture is there, right? You can also um, look at the validator set right here. And uh, you can also find Stexito obviously in there, but also others that are really great and are further, further down the list. I think here we're actually ranked 40 something, 42, 43. Um, but yeah, also Crypto Crew is here. Um, I just saw them and um, yeah, many others that are further down in the rankings. Also, second Relax, 370,000 time only in delegations. So yeah, make sure to diversify your, your delegations and actively follow the validator that you're delegated to, to ensure that they're still doing well, that they're contributing, that they are on top of the game and that they're not running any centralized business because that could disqualify you from an airdrop, right? So that's about that. Um, for Osmo, I guess it's the same thing. Um, for bad kids, actually, you probably just need to hold them. Uh, sometimes you need to register your bad kid for an airdrop. I think that was the case in the wormhole airdrop. Now, what are some of the best places to actually stay up to date on all things airdrops? There are actually three places, at least, that I would recommend. Number one is airdrops.one, which is a place where you can already see, right? That's why I said Dime right now is a base token for many airdrops. A lot of these roll apps are obviously dropping their tokens now to Dime stakers. So A-I-G-I-S-O-S, -I, -I, I don't know how to pronounce them still, but they will do an airdrop already confirmed, Cron Network, Dogemont, Rivals Network, Nebula Finance, uh, Liquid Staking, uh, Modular Liquid Staking Network. So, but yeah, those are already the first five dime airdrops that are confirmed. We also just got the NIM airdrop, which is not listed here, but I think this is in the claim now section, but um, yeah, you can check that out as well. Um, for Atom, well, first of all, we got Tia and Dime and Osmo and Juno and Chihuahua and everything else. Um, but coming up, we get Illis Network, we get Mantra. 50 million Mantra tokens will be allocated 
for Atom stakers, BadKids holders, and BitKid NFT holders. This has been announced so far. And I think that is 5% of the total supply or something like that. But um, yeah, 50 million Mantra tokens when the Mantra chain, which is a brand new Cosmos L1, is going to go live. Kinetics already announced as well. I shared updates with you here too. Aether, they're doing a massive Genesis drop for Atom exclusively. Um, so that's going to be really, really big. Um, Landslide is going to be another Cosmos Hub secure chain. So I wouldn't be too surprised if they did an airdrop too. And also Lorenzo Network, which is in Bitcoin, layer two as a service network that is going to launch using Cosmos Hub shared security. So if they have their own token, I wouldn't be surprised if that would be given out as an airdrop to Atom stakers as well. For Tia, we've got Milky Way, Hyper Network, Movement. Um, this is, I think, still rumors, but Movement, definitely one to put in your watch list. Very, very uh, legit protocol. Hydro as well. I made an, uh, in a video about that as well. Um, Hydro actually for INJ stickers, which could you could also add to your list. Staking INJ alongside Osmo. I think it's in a similar tier here. Uh, same for Say, by the way. I think Say staking Say also makes sense. There might be some airdrops in the future. Um, and Saga, right? Saga, we already know, is going to be dropped for uh, TS stakers and Atom stakers. Uh, the claim window is closed now, but um, if you watch my videos, then you definitely are aware of these things, right? And what you can claim now um, is, yeah, Nim, I already told you about that, Wormhole, um, Meme Alu, Multisig DAO, I'm not sure about that one for Juno stakers, GovGen, uh, we talked about it extensively. Um, and yeah, a couple of others that you can claim here, also Chain for Energy, you can claim that right now, actually. That one is also live in the uh, Deepin project uh, in the energy space. Yeah, this is how you get easy access through Adopted One in just a few clicks, you're on the claim page, and that's it. Another way I recommend you to stay up to date on all things airdrops is actually through Leap Wallet. They now have this eligibility tracker and checker where you can get access uh, directly to all these airdrops. Um, and yeah, many of them you already are familiar with. Uh, Namada, by the way, is also going to be a big one that's launching soon as well. And yeah, here is also the interesting thing because the Leap team has a very strong dev team, right? Strong engineers. So usually the code and the links and the, the project is vetted, right? Because the least the last thing that you want is to connect your wallet and get your, your, your funds drained, right? That's the last thing you want for chasing airdrops. That's why I think it's also smarter to be an airdrop optimizer and not an airdrop farmer because you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to spread yourself too thin. You don't want to miss out on eligibility because you have only one, one tier ac across 200 wallets. You don't want to either connect your wallets randomly to just any sort of website that claims to do an airdrop, which in the end turns out to be a scam, right? So you have to be very cautious on that. That's the big golden rule for doing the airdrops game. And that's about it, right? And lastly, I talked to you about it. Um, this is going to be probably the best place to stay on top of the things for all airdrops in Cosmos in real time, right? Because I obviously have a lot of um, direct connections to many of the teams um, in, in Cosmos, some of them that are existing builders and also new builders. So we're trying to make this the most alpha-packed airdrops page in Cosmos with early, early information and access about airdrops. And um, yeah, this is coming soon. We're still working on it. We're still kind of refining ideas on how we should present information about airdrops and all these kind of things. But yeah, this is definitely something that you should also bookmark the c2.zone website. Now looking ahead into April, I think April is going to be a very busy month as always pretty much in Cosmos. And we are going to get the Hava airdrop, Hava coin, which is a new meme coin in Cosmos that aims to be aligned with Celestia, Juno, Injective, Osmosis, Chihuahua, and Cosmos Hub community. So basically reuniting the Cosmos. And I think I made a series also this morning where I said basically Cosmos shouldn't force the meme coin culture into existence. But rather what we need is organically having these air, uh, meme coin experiments and um, doing airdrops around it. Uh, the Twitter game needs to be top notch, which is actually the case here on uh, Havacoin. I think their Twitter game is really, really uh, good. And they are also trying to get everyone to rally behind them, right? And if you look at the engagement, like this is decent engagement, right? And I have people reach out to me, even non-Cosmos people that are, um, excited about that one, right? So Hava is going to be interesting. I just hope that the launch goes smooth and that the arrow will be big. And I think the fact that they just burn half the supply um, means they, they doubled uh, basically the airdrop allocation, right? Relative to the total uh, supply of tokens. So they actually want to launch very soon and I guess primarily uh, deploy liquidity on Osmosis. So stay tuned there. And I think Osmosis itself is also working on some sort of like 
meme coin factory or something. Um, we obviously also have Chihuahua, which as of right now is the best Cosmos meme coin. We have Bad Dog. We have we we do have a couple of meme coins, but I think we don't really have one that's you know gone viral so far, right? That's gone viral as in has a nine-figure market cap, decent nine-figure market cap, right? Whereas, for example, we look at Dog with Hat, which is about to flip Atom actually, right? And the, uh, the by far largest meme coin on Solana right now. It's just gone absolutely crazy, right? From 30 cents here to $4.73, absolutely mad. $5 billion valuation almost. So that's something that Cosmos wants, but I also don't think Cosmos should force it, right? Because the ecosystem is so focused on the fundamental tech infrastructure, interoperability. It's just an ecosystem of builders and, you know, shippers. And I think the meme coin culture is right now definitely on Solana. It's not on Cosmos. It might be on Cosmos. And I think the chain, if there was one chain that can actually ignite meme coin culture in Cosmos, it would definitely be Barra chain, right? Because they also carry the meme already in their name. So this might be interesting, but other than that, let's see what, what Hava can, can achieve. Um, and uh, yeah, wish them all the best. I think this is going to be interesting. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave you with um, an outlook. Uh, like I said, uh, Hava is going to be doing the airdrop and launch this month uh, or next month in April. We also have Saga that is going to launch Mainnet in April. This is going to be a big, big impactful launch for the Cosmos ecosystem. One of the biggest ones this year. I think alongside Barachain and Babylon, Saga is um, going to have a huge impact. They're focused on the gaming sector. They have a lot of partnerships also outside of Cosmos with Polygon and Avalanche and basically also reunite the Cosmos with other ecosystems that are not Cosmos native. Um, but yeah, this is going to be super interesting and I'm very, very excited for Saga. With it, obviously, they're also launching their airdrop. Keep in mind that there will be a loyalty drop for Saga stakers. So probably once you read, uh, receive your Saga airdrop, you'll be able to stake them. And then um, you will probably get another airdrop for staking your Saga, right? So watch out for that. Babylon, I think they still need a couple more months. I think it's more like Q3 that they will launch. Whereas I think Barrett Chain is going to launch this quarter as well, right? From tomorrow, this quarter. Um, but yeah, in the next three months. So this is going to be interesting as well. And I actually am going to make a separate video on my biggest launches in Cosmos, the next big launches in Cosmos um, very soon, like a dedicated episode on that. Today was more about airdrops. Um, we also should probably do a video on that. Um, I made a tweet yesterday where I said like, this is how Cosmos season actually looks like, right? Because we already have Cosmos season left and right, right? Fetch is at all time highs. Akash Network is scratching at all time highs. EOS, billion dollar market cap, humans AI pumping, kudos pumping, Celestia pioneered and dominates modularity, dimension, movement, eclipse. There's huge rollups and um, modularity projects uh, also lined up, but also live like dimension, for example. Um, restaking is huge. Um, the injectives and say networks and chronos. Like this whole ecosystem is so, so vast and so diverse, even Axela, right? Which I think many people don't even know that those chains are actually full on Cosmos chains, right? So I think, yeah, I'm probably going to do a separate video on that, like how Cosmos season actually looks like. And it's also kind of in swing already, maybe not in full swing, but um, it's already in swing, right? And I think there's opportunities left and right, right? Outside of meme coins on Solana, there's a lot of um, infrastructure plays and kind of narrative plays, right? In, in Cosmos, right? And most of that innovation actually happens on Cosmos chains, right? I hope you enjoy your Sunday. Had a great weekend. I'll see you a lot next week. We have a lot of content lined up for next week. So until then, stay safe and be good.